Well, good morning, everybody, uh, and thank you, students, for the introduction. Uh, I'm here today to share briefly about media content and how it helps in building brands. Uh, what Stephen asked me to do is basically give you a brief overview of how the three elements work uh, before you get in the details of uh, customer publication where Patrick, Julia would spend a lot of time focusing on the editorial content and then you'll have Eslinda speaking about CNN Traveler. Uh, so let's start with today's uh, discussion. Let's see if this works. Yeah. So what I'll do today is first give you a brief uh, glance of how the various media elements work. And then I'll go a bit more into the magazine or print media, uh, which will lead into customer publications. So when we talk of media, essentially, and we talk of return on investments, the key things that we talk about, obviously, is the weight of spend. So the, obviously, the higher you spend, uh, the more is likely to be the impact on the brand, what we call the share of voice. But spend is one part of the story. The other thing to look at is what are the media channels that you have selected. Have we selected the right channels for the target audience? Then the next thing, obviously, which a lot of the creative agencies will focus on is what's the impact of the creator? A stronger execution you have, the better chances of it reaching out to your consumers. What kind of persuasion does the communication create for the brand? And finally, it's all about what is happening in the market. What are competitors pricing strategy? How elastic is your brand? So all this will impact how the overall effect of communication on a brand is. Now, these are the elements which we control. What we don't have a control over is what is the consumer response? Uh, it's hidden a bit. Let me just push this down. Yeah, that should be better. So what I'm going to do in the next few minutes is focus more on the media channels, specifically on print, and how the consumers respond to the media, and then go on to customer publication, which will finally lead on to my fellow speakers in terms of how customer publication works, what is the theory behind the CNN Traveler, etc., etc. But when we look at media, we essentially look at it in terms of two dimensions. The first, what you see on the horizontal axis. Sorry, can you hear me at the back? Can I? Yeah. The first that we look at is how much control the consumers have over the exposure. I.e., can a consumer decide whether they want to see more or less of the ads they're exposed to? The second axis which is what we call the lean forward or the lean back axis, is the mood and response, the mood in terms of how consumers consume media. So just to give you an example, when you think of media as like internet or print, we classify them as lean forward media. But because these are media, the consumer, consumers are more active and there is an element of goal seeking behind it. They're looking to get some information, they're looking to get something out of the media. So if you're reading a magazine, or you're going online, there is a purpose behind it. So this is what we call the lean forward media. But then you have other media, let's say like outdoor, where the mood of consumption is very passive. You're passing by in your car or you're walking down a street, and what an outdoor media does, it breaks the monotony breaks the border. So it's a very passive kind of media in terms of consumption. And then you have two of the other medias, which is radio and television. Now radio, all of us, what do we do with radio? We put it in the background, we listen to the music, and we do other tasks, whether we are working or doing something else. So it's always in the background. It's always a kind of passive media. 
then television is another form of passive media. Although it's more active than a radio, but still the mood of consumption is very passive. You're relaxing at home, you're sitting back from office. So it's a very passive kind of media in terms of consumption. Although compared to radio, it will be more active because you're looking for some kind of gratification, some kind of stimulation. And finally, you have cinema, which is a more active consumption medium. So if you go to a cinema and you see ads there, you're slightly more involved in what you see. And so we say cinema is a more active. Now the reason I have put up these elements in terms of these two axes is when we put content, when we communicate something to consumers, a lot depends in terms of the reaction, a lot depends in terms of how much of control they have over exposure and what is their mood in terms of consuming the media. So if I talk of the lean forward media, which is a print internet, it can be very, very strong in terms of communicating information about the brand. If you want to create interest in a brand, if you want to create, if you want to convey a lot of information about the product, a print media or the internet works much better. But let's say you're talking about a media like radio or television, where the mood of consumption is very passive, you wouldn't want to communicate a lot of information about a product or brand because consumers tend to lose it. So if you want to have an impactful communication in radio and print, the idea is to convey more about the holistic brand. So if you want to create brand awareness, radio works pretty well. And it's, it's almost like a support to some of the other media, like television. Well, in terms of the impact of television, it's essentially in terms of creating affinity for your brand, in terms of con conveying emotional content in terms of conveying the softer nuances of the brand. So the way you communicate plays a big role in terms of how media is consumed. And then if you look at an outdoor, we all know it's all about a stopping point. It's all about eye catching ability. And it's essentially about conveying the brand. So that's how we look at how different media works and how we should content in terms of the various media elements. Now let me go